How has the festival been for you, JP? It's been good. It's been good. Yeah. And, yeah. And in terms of how how it's all gone, because you were you were an art bubble guest in 2015. Yeah. And you showed up with these characters that were just these one-off comic strip drawings done for your own sanity's sake. Yes. Yeah. Can you tell us a bit about how that's developed since then? Yeah. Um, so in 2015, uh, I was going through a burnout, which led to a depression. And uh, I noticed that I was getting, uh, work-wise, I was getting very meticulous about um, like insignificant details in, in drawing and, and uh, telling stories in general. And it was affecting like, well, it, it affected all my work, not only just my comics, but also the freelance illustration work I was doing at the time. And I was really getting fed up with it because even smaller, simpler illustrations I was doing ended up taking hours just because I was somehow crippled and uh, all that, getting really anal about things. And uh, I thought that I was all, all already like contemplating on finding some other work like, yeah, screw illustration work, screw uh, comic comics and uh, my brain can't <laughs> take this anymore. And uh, but yeah, for, for some reason, I participated in the Inktober challenge, which was uh, in October and uh, thought that maybe there's a way for me to fight fire with fire, you know, like draw myself out of the pits. Uh, all I'd need is some sort of way to loosen up when drawing and find the sort of joy of uh, drawing and storytelling again. And, uh, and yeah, that's how the first Beelzebub's uh, kind of uh, one panel gag came, came about came to be um, yeah I, I just improvised this one-off little gag with two black metal dudes uh, commenting on a shirt thinking it's a black metal logo but in fact it's a uh, dried vomit and uh, I ended up making black metal a sort of theme so I wouldn't have to uh, uh, think of a new new sort of theme or a joke the next day for Inktober and uh, yeah, I ended up doing 20 or so, 20 uh, comics or, or single panel, panel gags. And uh, yeah, then I got swept away with other freelance work uh, at the time. But uh, the sort of thematic and uh, the characters, the black and white uh, look of, of Beelzebub's, which I'd already named at that time, started nagging me in the back of my head and uh, that turned into my first web comic like a le uh, like a year later in 2016 and uh, what I'd done was basically I'd uh, drawn 40 or, or so strips um, in uh, during the summer and which I just like um, scheduled on Facebook and other so social media so I was published the, uh, pub publishing those uh, once per week. And that was sort of my self-therapy project. Something small just for me without any stress. But uh, yeah, that sort of started to take off, like gaining traction. And uh, during one weekend, the uh, following uh, follower account uh, count uh, jump from around 1,000 to 16,000 or something like that. I don't know who sh shared what, but, uh, but yeah. Uh, my first fear was that, oh no, now all the true cult, like purists will come and like hate what I've been doing for my own sanity's sake. But it was quite the opposite. Like so, it, the comics drew in like comic book nerds, horror nerds, metal nerds, all, all kinds of cool people. So 
in a in a sense this sort of Beelzebub's community started like uh, making uh, taking shape online and uh, yeah one thing led to another um, when when starting out the web comics uh, I'm talking long by the way okay. <laughs> yeah um, yeah, w when I started out the webcomic, I wanted to do all kinds of things I, I couldn't do with the newspaper strips and, and uh, like traditional media I'd, I'd been doing for 15 years or so. So that, of course, included, you know, like adding music and crude animation, which I thought I'd be doing by myself. But uh, soon enough, uh, we started plotting with a musician friend of mine and uh, that we need proper songs for these, this this uh, imaginary band in in Beelzebub's, and uh, yeah, we made some demos, got a record deal with Century Media, which led into uh, <laughs> needing to create animated uh, music videos for this virtual band, uh, which snowballed into uh, pitching this to. Um, our national broadcaster, YLE, or ULE. And uh, now I have this cross-media behemoth in my hands, so I'm maintaining the weekly comics for newspaper and online purposes, uh, script writing, an animated series, and uh, we're plotting uh, the the second album with, with the band. and. Uh, and hopefully, well, hope to take this uh, project on the road to uh, rock festivals and metal festivals later on. So that's it in a nutshell. <laughs> now, you've been published in several countries um, outside of Finland. Of course, it's out in America. Yeah. And, and this weekend, we're standing at Reffen uh, Reffsheiler Uyn for Copenhagen. Yeah. And the Danish book is out. How has yeah. it been received? As far as I can tell, very well. Uh, I have no no idea of the sales or anything, but it's been super nice to see um, people come up to the booth and say hi and pick up the book. Book and I've been busy throughout the festival, really, like signing books and chatting with uh, with the readers, fans, and uh, all that. And uh, yeah, the, the feedback has been really positive. I. I hope everyone who's come to the booth has uh, walked away with a with a signed and, and doodled uh, book they're happy with. So, in terms of of the success, mm. where do you feel that it's all going? Where it's all going? Um, well. That's a good question. Um, how I see Beelzebub's is a, well, this cross culture, uh, cross media uh, narrative um, project, you know. Um, so part of the story uh, is told through the comics, part of the story is in the music videos, the lyrics the realm within those lyrics uh, even in like metal magazine interviews those deepen the characters and their backgrounds and stuff like that and the characters even have uh, their own Twitter accounts where where are like um, where they're messing about uh, and uh, and yeah it's a uh, it's fun. I mean, uh, I, I get to sort of shed light on on different uh, aspects of, of their daily life and in through all these different mediums. And I, I think, like the upcoming animated series, as far as it's uh, uh, well, as it's shaping up now, I, I hope that it will sort of tie some strings together, you know, and, and make it a more coherent. Uh, story in itself and um, yeah I just hope that the first season is received well once it's hopefully done 
<laughs> and uh, I, I get to do season number two and, and all that because there's a lot of story like behind Beelzebub's and I feel like the the mythos and and the sort of um, concept behind behind it uh, constantly feeds new ideas so it can like there's a lot to like I don't know fall into um, no take this again <laughs> you can really go down that rabbit hole <laughs> you know there's a lot to lot to find and and dig through in Beelzebub's yeah. and now you mentioned or, or you don't have to mention it but mm. Beelzebub's has been a, a comic book band and now it's an actual band mm. you have you have an album out you're working on a second album yeah. as well as the TV show that you just mentioned yeah um, and of course everything went haywire screwball because of COVID yeah is is the band coming do you think live yeah 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 hope so um, that's the that's the plan anyhow like we we already started the pre-production for the live shows. We were in, what's the year, 20? Uh, we'd been working on the pre-production since August or something. Even prior to that, I mean, we've been working on figuring out the concept of uh, how to how to get the, the band on stage and, and how to visualize it and all that. But like working on the 3D characters and animations and all that, we'd, we'd started working in, in August, uh, modeling the characters and, and all that. And uh, yeah, we'd put in a lot of money and uh, time, time for the live shows. And when COVID came along, all we were, uh, yeah, all that was left was this insane amount of debt <laughs> we had on our hands and no real way to uh, pay back. Uh, for example, the motion capture studios and whatnot. So yeah, we, we needed to uh, devise a new plan for that. Uh, but still like, um, yeah, the, the plans for the live shows are there. Um, so so when when we get the second album out and, and i get a bit of free time from everything else I, I think we'll be ready to start plotting what we can do and if there's something we need to uh, uh reevaluate and, and um, redesign for the live shows like make it more cost effective and etc et because now i feel that whatever we do with beelzebub's it ends up taking like <laughs> months years to produce like um, a normal band might be flexible and, and agile in that way that when, when they get a um, offer offer to uh, go play and they can see if their schedules align and then just pack up their gear and go but but we're scattered around the globe and uh, and uh, yeah getting this show on the road takes uh takes some money yeah. so now final question i think yeah um in terms of like now the book is out in denmark you're going to start building a bigger danish fan base uh hopefully, hopefully. you'll come back to art bubble as well yeah um do you see the bells above playing coven hell which is making a lot of noise behind us yeah well uh when we were shopping for uh, festivals back in uh, 2019, Copenhagen was already interested in having us. But the problem was that given our live show, they didn't have the proper stage for us because we were, we were hoping for a festival tent where to play or at least some, some place which, is, uh, which can offer like uh, complete darkness in a way so so our visuals would work but uh, but let's see I mean I, I hope we can play Copenhagen in the future uh, and that all depends on whether we're able to 
mm, redesign some of some of the stage show, show and stuff like that. So fingers crossed. First of all, to the people that came over, a massive thank you. Um, I I felt welcomed and, and like appreciated, and it's always humbling. Like um, like I said, it's it's something I do mainly for myself, but I'm I'm super happy and honored that other other people uh, enjoy my works and and uh, get something from that and and seeing the. I don't know. Um, seeing the appreciation and uh, uh, the people's face light light up, you know, when you, when you do the the signings and stuff like that, and draw something to their books, it's it's rewarding. Like I, I get a lot of energy from that interaction, and and really really love the fan base. So so thank you, <laughs> all existing fans, and uh, for people who haven't read Beelzebub's take a chance if you don't like it fine that's okay <laughs> plenty of other good comics to read better comics to read than mine but uh, but yeah if you happen to enjoy Beelzebub's welcome aboard I'm Charlie Adlard and you're watching Art Bubble TV.